art nerds! Today we're taking a look at the Da Vinci Artist watercolors. So if you want to see what's inside the set, you're just going to have to keep watching. This set of Da Vinci Artist watercolors was purchased from Jerry's Artorama during a sale and it arrived recently and I've been saving it for you guys. I've been a little bit busy with freelance and other paying work but I wanted to share these with you. I'm on a quest to find sort of a replacement for Windsor & Newton watercolors or to see if there are other brands that better suit my watercolor comic needs. So the back says, a colorful three generation, oh, a colorful road Three generations long has led Da Vinci artist colors to become a work of art of their own. Still prepared in small batches with trusted craftsmanship quality, Da Vinci colors are consistently those that artists love to discover. At Da Vinci, we go beyond merely dabbling with the world's finest raw materials. <laughs> Whoa, shots fired. Mixing and milling colors that truly perform is our, in our DNA. Our colors represent who we are and what we do. We immerse ourselves in preparing perfect batches of color every day so you too can have a can have full freedom of artistic expression without compromise. We hope you enjoy using Da Vinci paints as much as we enjoy making them. Marcello. And then you can check these out at davincipaints.com. And I believe I got the 12 whole palette set and I paid around 50 something since they were on sale and it seemed like a really good deal. I'm gonna go ahead and unbox these. Another selling point is that they came, ooh, I like the palette. I mean, this is a pretty stock palette. We've seen a lot of these, um, but I love the color and I love that it has kind of a matte finish. And I love that they've screened their name on it. In fact, I will grab an example. Yep, slightly different. This is an inexpensive Hanbei palette from Amazon. And this is the Da Vinci palette. And if you are interested in quality watercolors for your comics and illustrations, I have done videos where I've reviewed Magello Mission Gold, Holbein uh, Artist Grade Watercolors, Sennelier Watercolors, M. Graham Watercolors, Daniel Smith Watercolors. I think I've hit almost the entire gamut and I have some Windsor & Newton half pans and tubes coming in so I can do a head-to-head -head comparison with those as well. Inside we have our color card, but it is not a sheet of watercolor paper. So I'm gonna to have to make a mi um, map. And then we have our whole pans. I have here a half pan. We have a half pan here. They seem a little bit smaller than your normal half pan capacity. And the tray is removable and features these neat clear half palettes, or I'm sorry, whole pans, which don't have anything to hold them in other than being kind of friction fit. Those seem very narrow for half pans. I know my White Knight set is floating around here somewhere, so I'll grab that and we'll compare that as well. So here I have my White Knights watercolor set. And the only reason we're comparing them head to head right now is both feature full pans. I'm gonna have to be careful because the Yarka set likes to slip and slide a little bit. I just want to remove, hopefully one. Did I tape them in? Okay. So the Yarka pans are a little bit shorter and a little bit wider than the Da Vinci pans. So really the Da Vinci pans are just kind of long hole pans, but they would still hold, it seems, the same capacity as any other full pan. So Da Vinci Artist watercolors are available in whole pans like these or in tubes ranging from 15 milliliters to 37 milliliters. You can get them from Cheap Joe's, Dick Blick, or Jerry's Artorama. I got mine through Jerry's Artorama and Jerry seems to be the only one that's carrying that whole pan mixing set that we're looking at here. The other ones uh, will carry open stock tubes and a few of them, um, I'm sorry, Cheap Joe's has a few of the sets, but the Da Vinci website has 
far more interesting color combination sets and it's fairly comparable. I think they want $56 for the whole pan set and I paid $54 on sale. So if you want to buy direct from the manufacturer, that is definitely an option. The tube sets are available in Flower Palette mix it, Mixing Set, Iridescent and Quinacridone Palette Set, as well as the Mixing Triad and a Quinacridone Triad and then this pan mixing set here. And Da Vinci makes watercolor mediums, oil mediums, fluid acrylics, acrylic squash, and oil paints. They were established in 1975 by Rudolf Dwozak, an the son of an Italian um, art supply manufacturer. And it developed the first permanent alizarin crimson, and these are made in California. So if you are interested in purchasing art supplies made in the U.S., this is one of the brands that does just that. So today we are doing our unboxing swatch, which means swatching. And I'm going to do my swatching on Blick Premier watercolor paper. This is a 100% cotton rag watercolor paper that I feel is fairly comparable to Arches and much cheaper. And I'd like to take a moment to thank my art nerds over on Patreon. It is with their support that I am able to do this sort of watercolor testing. Their support enables me to buy supplies like this, as well as the supplies required for doing fairly thorough testing. So using a pigment-based Pentel brush pen, you can get these over on Amazon. I went ahead and I drew some lines on my watercolor paper. This is going to help us with opacity testing. And I'm going to let these cure for a few minutes before I begin my unboxing and swatch. So our lines have had a chance to cure. I am going to use a Sumi brush for this and I'm just going to brush some water onto each of these half pans. Or I'm sorry, whole pans. I'm so used to working with half pans that I keep misspeaking. I apologize if that's causing any confusion. I know you guys are smart though, so hopefully not. We have 12 colors we're going to be looking at today. We have Da Vinci Yellow, which is semi-transparent. We have Hansa Yellow Deep, which is transparent. We have Da Vinci Red, which is semi-transparent. We have Alizarin Crimson. This is a quinacridone Alizarin Crimson, which is transparent. We have a quinacridone Permanent Rose, which is transparent. We have a Thalo Blue Red Shade, which is transparent. Ultramarine, which is transparent. Sap Green, which is semi-transparent. Yellow Ochre, which is semi-opaque. Burnt Sienna, which is transparent, burnt umber, which is semi-transparent, and titanium white, which is opaque. What I like about this is it lists the pigments. So we are dealing with, it looks like one color. Yeah, only one color, sap green is multiple pigments. Everything seems to be sing single pigment paints, which is pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to be doing a mass tone, a gradient, and then another mass tone. And I'm gonna use the Sumi brush for the gradients. I'm gonna go ahead and start. So if you pre-activate these watercolors, they seem to handle fairly thick. But do, despite that, they do seem to be fully transparent. And it seems that my black pigment had not fully dried because it did reactivate. Something I've already noticed, I had to switch memory cards and do some video transferring real fast, is that these tend to get goopy. So these may not be the sort of watercolors you want to pre-activate. These may be moist enough that you can work directly from the tube, or rather the pans, the full pans, without having to pre-activate them. Which makes me wonder if these just use the same formula that the tubes use. Also, at least with this large, somewhat floppy Sumi brush, tend to want to splatter everywhere. But for people who paint large, this could be really good because it means you can mix up a large field 
of intense vibrant color very quickly, even working from whole pans or, you know, somewhat dry, semi-dry, I guess, watercolor. For someone like me who does a lot of illustration and watercolor comic work, these can still be a great option. They're just something that I need to be a little more careful with when I'm using. However, the colors are really nice and bright. It seems like they might benefit from a slightly stiffer brush for mixing. And I find it interesting, but by no means a problem that we don't get a black. We get plenty of really nice colors that we can definitely mix darker tones with. And as I learned in my Daniel Smith Essential 6 video, mixing a black is actually not too challenging. Now usually whites are included in sets like this, not necessarily for corrections, but as a mixing white, so that you can mix um, lighter colors. Some people, I guess, pre don't prefer to use the white of the paper as their white or their pastel. They prefer to mix a white in it. It can also change the opacity of your colors. So if you have very transparent colors and you wanted to do uh, maybe some finer details and you wanted them to show up, you could mix a little white in there and they would show up a little bit better. Okay, I am next going to use a synthetic Cotman flat to do math tone swatches. And as I said before, these may not need to be pre-activated because that seems to make them a little bit soapy, I guess, goopy. Too much picks up. These are not as dry as say, Windsor Newton half pans. but they reactivate very quickly. So you can get intense color pretty much immediately, which could make them really good for say field sketching or another situation where you can't afford to wait too long for your colors to wake up. It's actually a really nice ultramarine. And because I'm picking up so much paint, um, I, my, mud, my water has gotten very muddy very quickly. So that's also another consideration is that I'm kind of wasting a lot of paint doing it like this because these are so soft. All right, I'm gonna let these dry and check in with you, but we're gonna, but while that happens, I'm gonna go through the color names and pigments one more time. Da Vinci Yellow, it is semi-transparent and it's using PY154. Ooh, that's wet. <laughs> Hansa Yellow Deep, which is transparent, which is using PY65. Da Vinci Red, which is semi-transparent, which is using PR254. Alizarin Crimson, which is a crinacridone crimson and probably why it's so permanent, it is transparent with PV19 as the pigment. Permanent Rose, another quinacridone color. It is transparent, PV19, and it is probably a lot more light fast than Opera Rose. Phthalo Blue Red Shade, transparent, PB15. Ultramarine Green Shade, transparent, PB29. Sap Green, semi-transparent, PG7 and PY42. Yellow Ochre, semi-opaque. PY43, Burnt Sienna, transparent PBR, so pigment brown, seven. Burnt Umber, semi-transparent PBR, seven, again. And then Titanium White, opaque PW6. All right, our Da Vinci watercolors have dried. Since there's several quinacridone colors in this set, we're not going to see so much uh, granulation with the reds, but the ultramarine blue has a nice amount of granulation in it. 
as does the burnt umber. And this is why I used a nice cold pressed cotton rag paper is I was hoping that would come out. And I find that this allows, this kind of paper allows nicer paints to really shine. So I look forward to testing these out in the field test, putting them to the real true watercolor illustration test since there are unique needs for watercolor comics and watercolor illustration. If you guys are just interested in seeing how these paints handle, check out my Da Vinci demonstration, which is coming up really soon. So thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again really soon. And I hope you found this video useful, helpful, and informative. If there are any questions, if there's anything you'd like to see me demonstrate in depth, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy watercolor and you're looking for more watercolor tutorials, head on over to natosuit.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basic series. It is a tutorial series aimed at watercolor comic artists, so I think it hits a very specific need. And I think those of you who are looking for a little help with your watercolor comics might find it a fantastic resource. If you enjoy that, make sure you also check out my beautiful watercolor comic, Seven Inch Kara, which is free to read at 7inchcara.com and 7inchcara.tumblr.com. Once again, I'd like to thank my art nerds for their support in making this video. Have a great day, guys. Bye!